So this is the last video in the series, and this is really where uh, the magic kind of happens. So we made glucose in the chloroplast. We transferred that glucose into the cytoplasm. We converted it into pyruvic acid. Pyruvic acid has now gone into the mitochondria. And within the matrix, it made these really two cool molecules, FADH2 and NADH. And they're just like ATP molecules, only they don't hold as much energy as an ATP molecule does. But they provide some energy. Um, and so they're going to help us make more of those. So if I really looked at a mitochondria, I have this purple stuff, right? That's the matrix. And I also have this yellow stuff, this inner membrane, right? So it actually has two membranes. It has this outer membrane, right? And it also has an inner membrane. And that inner membrane is called the cristae. So if I blew up the cristae, I would see something that looked kind of like this. Um, it's not the best example, but um, it looks similar to this. Or if I look down here, you can see that it's got phospholipids, and then it's got a series of proteins. It should look pretty similar to what we looked at before, right? So here we see this inner membrane right here. You guys need to realize that this thing is surrounded by, this is a matrix on this side, and this is a matrix on this side. And so it's just completely surrounded by, you can see right here, um, this this matrix right so we made in the matrix remember we're all over in this matrix I'm making vast amounts of NADH and FADH2 and um, so what will happen is that FADH and NADH I'm sorry FADH2 and NADH will eventually run into um, the cristae and the cristae will have um, different components of it and the first thing that it runs into is this thing right here so this thing right here, this is a proton pump. Just like we saw before in photosynthesis, it's a very similar mechanism, and it's just taking the H plus ions and it's moving them from a high concentration to a low concentration. Okay, um, And where did that H molecule come from? It came from the splitting of either F, um, NADH or FADH2, right? So remember the NADH and the FADH2 are really unstable molecules. They don't like those H's on there. So they're free to give them up. So as this um, interacts with this proton pump, a, the H molecule will come off of here, and H will get pumped through here. And H being what it is, um, unstable as it is, it doesn't want to hold on to that electron. So it readily donates an electron, right? So as we're moving through here, this becomes an ion. And the only way to become an ion is either to gain or lose an electron. And in this case, it's going to lose an electron. It's going to donate that electron. And guess what the electron does? The electron goes, can you see this? Down the electron transport chain, right? So I'm pumping all these electrons from NADH coming through. So the H's are coming through here. I've got hydrogen and it's going to get pumped through here. And in the process, it's going to excite the electron. The electron is going to leave. It's going to go down the series of proton pumps and proteins and everything else. And it's going to donate energy because energy can't be created or destroyed. And as you can see, I pump a lot of H pluses through here, right? Because it's really surrounded on both sides by hydrogen. This NADH and this FADH2 that we were constantly making in the Krebs cycle, it's pumping through here, right? So I'm constantly getting these electrons that are pumping through, pumping through, pumping through, pumping through. Well, what does that energy ultimately do? In the movie, we saw it actually turns that turbine. So really, this thing right here, this is called um, ATP synthase. ATP synthase. And remember, ACE designates that it is a um, enzyme, right? So this is an enzyme, and specifically, it is an enzyme. It's an enzyme that um, allows ADP two phosphates, right? So 
here's ADP to convert into ATP. Well, again, ADP is very stable. ATP is not stable. And so as I pump this concentration of hydrogen through here, I'm going to donate the energy from the electron transport chain. And that energy then is going to change or reconfigure that motor that's spinning in here that's connecting those ADP molecules um, to a phosphate group, bonding them, and forcing them to become ATP. So again, all I'm doing is I'm taking my high energy molecules, NADH and FADH2, I'm pumping them through a proton pump, um, which is kind of squeezing it and exciting the electrons so much that the electrons break off and go wee down the electron transport chain. The hydrogens come out to the other side. The energy then transfers to ATP synthase, which is an enzyme. And that enzyme then transforms energy donated by the electrons to convert ADP plus a phosphate group into ATP. And that's really our ultimate goal, right? We are trying to make ATP. We're trying to make it this whole time. Then it makes an enormous amount of ATP molecules. So um, we can make up to 34 ATP molecules per unit of glucose that comes in. So that's just one ATP synthase molecule. So you've got to think about how many ATP synthase molecules are there and then the breakdown from that. Um, and you can imagine the enormous amount of ATP that's produced. Also, things like your muscle cells and your lung cells, they all contain up to 3,000 mitochondria per cell. So they are making enormous amounts of energy constantly. All right, so the only thing that we have left to talk about is oxygen and oxygen's role in this process. So oxygen is a diatomic molecule, just meaning that it's O2, right? It's the stuff that we breathe in. And we breathe this into, um, into our lungs, and then that diffuses into our blood system into our cells, our, the matrix around our cells, into our cells, and then our cytoplasm becomes rich in it, and then it diffuses across the mitochondrial membrane into the matrix, right? So this matrix is, is really infused with a lot of things, right? It's infused with NADH and FADH2 and CO2 and citric acid and acetyl-CoA and all the other things that it needs, right? But it's also got a lot of O2 in there. So this is what I want you guys to think of. I want you guys to think of a bunch of cars in a driveway, right? So you're at a party, and there's a bunch of cars in the driveway, and somebody has to leave, and they were one of the first people to come. Well, to get this car out of the rest of the driveway, I have to move these electrons. And these electrons can't just keep going and going and going, right? So that after they hit ATP synthase and are used, they need to be discarded somewhere. And we don't want them just floating around in the matrix. So what happens is oxygen kind of comes along to save the day. Let's make this one um, a nice bright color or something so that dun, 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 it comes to save the day. Oops. Now it's coming to save the day, right? So oxygen, here it comes, it's kind of like a chauffeur, and it's going to pick up these electrons. So it's going to attach to, um, to O2, the, the E is going to attach to O2. This energizes O2, so now it's got some extra energy, and it's going to come zipping down here, and guess what it's going to bump into? <gasps> An H molecule. And as we know, H plus O yields... H plus O2 is going to yield H2O. That's not a balanced equation. Sorry. You feel free to balance it if you like to. But um, that's what's going to happen. 
So as we breathe in oxygen, this oxygen gets diffused into our membranes, um, into the matrix, and it picks up these electrons as they're weeing down the electron transport chain. It excites the electrons. Those That oxygen becomes excited. It bumps into a hydrogen molecule, and it forms H2O. Now, just like if we run out of chauffeurs, what happens to the chain of electrons? It stops, right? So if I run out of oxygen, I can't transport these electrons. I only have so much space to transport these electrons before it hits the end of this, right? Before this energy has to be transferred. And if I get all backed up in here and I can't pump any more protons through and I can't allow this energy to be transported down the electron transport chain, I can't make ATP. And if I can't make ATP, I cannot have any cellular energy. I have to have it for cellular energy. It's like going um, over to a foreign country and not having the correct currency, right? Going over to Europe and not having a euro. If I go and try and pay with a peso, it's not going to do me any good. I don't have the right kind of currency. So I have to have oxygen to pick up these extra electrons, and I have to have it so that these electrons keep moving down the electron transport chain. Because without them, I don't get this energy transfer to ATP synthase to transform ADP plus a phosphate group into ATP. And that's really what happens when you run out of oxygen, um, is that your cells are slowly dying because they're not making ATP. So um, the oxygen is called the, I'm going to put this up here so I can um, get to it. It's called the final electron acceptor because it actually goes and gets the electron from the electron transport chain to keep this whole thing running. That's it. Now I've made up to 34 ATP molecules per unit of glucose. Um, this is This is 66% efficient. So before we had, um, we had, sorry, let's go back on. Um, fermentation that was 33% efficient. Now just with the production of oxygen and allowing these electrons to wee down the transport chain, now these um, this energy can be transferred so much quicker. All this stuff can happen so much faster. And this constant pump of hydrogens will allow ADP plus a phosphate group to bond together to ATP, which is 66% more efficient. So it's up to um, double the amount of efficiency that it, we can do with fermentation. And this is what allows us to become multicellular large organisms. Without the mitochondria, we could not do this. And without oxygen, we could not do this. So you made it, hooray. Um, so let's do the start switch really quick. So I started with NADH and FADH2. Um, and I ended up with up to 34 molecules of ATP. So the NADH and FADH2 came from Krebs cycle. And the ATP is used throughout the cell. So the ATP becomes high in concentration inside the mitochondria and then um, and then transports from there. And then location, this is located um, in the Christe of the mitochondria. So again, this um, ATP molecule is used for all cellular activities. So this becomes very, very high in concentration inside the matrix. Um, it just diffuses out through the mitochondrial membrane and into the cell to be used for everything.